In this video, I want to present an FPV approach for the Hover Games drone. The most direct and straightforward approach is to connect an FPV camera to a VTX and use a goggle to receive images from the drone. But FPV means more than that. For example, I want to see in the video stream the GPS coordinate of the drone, the flight mode, altitude, speed, or the receiver signal strength. All of this in real time. In PX4 Autopilot, we need an additional piece of hardware to combine different information from the flight management we need with the video data. This piece of hardware, in my case, is an on screen display board called Micro OSD. The Micro OSD reads all the MavLink data from the flight management unit telemetry stream and overlies it on the input video stream obtained from an onboard camera. The results will be sent to the wireless video transmitter that is connected to this port. As you can see in this diagram, it is very easy to connect the OSD module, the flight management unit, the camera and the VTX module. Micro OSD uses two stages of the power setup to avoid noises coming from the motors, mainly because these noises could introduce some glitches on the video signal. We have here the first power stage that is coming from the flight management unit and the second power stage that is sustained from a dedicated battery. This approach is a disadvantage and it will be eliminated a bit later, maybe in another movie, mainly because this is not the primary purpose of this movie. Now let's see how the real connection were made. Okay, I forgot something. So before I will show to you how the connection were made, I want to mention that on the market there are other OSD modules like the ones presented here. But most of them are compatible. In fact, they contain the same integrated circuit inside. If we compare the connection diagrams for the minimum OSD in the left part and the micro OSD in the right part, we can see that are almost the same. More of that, when the micro OSD boot on the goggle, we can see this. So the system is minimum OSD, but was renamed in micro OSD. Moreover, I want to mention here that the firmware that was inside the micro OSD board and generated this booting image was the original one. As a direct conclusion, all you will learn here can be very easy used in order to work with a different OSD module. Now, let's go further. So, the core of the FPV system is a micro OSD module. In the left part, we have the cable used to interconnect with the flight management unit. In the right upper part, we have a connection to the FPV cam. This wire that go here. Also, here we have the power supply lines that go to the D6 Pro system used here as a power supply. The second stage power supply voltage is 12 volts. As it is presented in the data sheet. But in time, micro OSD get too hot on 12 volts setup. In the 
right down part. We have a connection to the VTX system. On this wireless video transmitter, nothing is unusual. Here we have the module that works on 5.8 GHz, a pigtail, and an omnidirectional pagoda antenna. But before we put the goggle and get the marveling information in the video stream, the last step must be done in QGrow control. We must configure the flight management unit to send the information to the OSD module. So first, go to Setup. Here. Parameters. And from here, select the MAV link. Because my OSD module is connected to the telemetry port 2, I chose on the Mavli config the telemetry port 2. And in the mode, the OSD. Here I am notified that I must reboot the quadcopter in order that this setting take effect. Ok, I will do this a little bit later, after I made the last setting on the serial selection, where I select the baud rate to to 57600, 8 bits of data, no parity, and 1 bit of stop. We go to the tools, and from here, choose Reboot the system. Press OK. Communication lost. This Manual flight mode. was all, but in the end, let's check if all is OK. Settings, Parameters, Mavlink, Telemetry 2, OSD, and Serial. All the settings are on. Now, let's see what we can see in the goggle. Ok, you can easily see that between the OSD module and the flight management unit is a data exchange from the horizontal line. If I tilt the hover games drone, the horizontal line change accordingly. The final implementation of my FPV system for the Hover Games drone is here. In the end, resulted a very compact realization and, in my opinion, a very beautiful implementation. So, here is a VTX. Under it is a mini OSD module. With the connection cables to the flight management unit. In front, 
we have the FPV camera, the pigtail, and an omnidirectional pagoda antenna. In the bottom part, we have a custom power module used to power up the second power stage of the OSD module. This is an, in order to not use an additional dedicated battery. It also collects the power lines from the VTX here and here. and FPV camera. In this mode we have only two connection points from the drone power distribution board. Here is a positive wire line and the ground point. Okay, this is all and now let's see some video from the flying drone. But before, let's have a global view of the system. As you can see here, my OSD has been upgraded from the 2.2 up to 2.4 firmware version. In the beginning, no satellite has been received, and as a direct result, the altitude and position information cannot be taken into consideration. Here you have the height above the sea level in meters, and here the home altitude, your height above your home position in meters. Now the FMU gets GPS lock and the altitude and position values are reliable and can be used. This is a flight mode. When the quadcopter is armed, you will see a propeller symbol here after the flight mode string. But here we have a problem. When I change the flight mode, nothing is happen. The same text stab remains. Unfortunately, the video was done on a cloudy and windy day, and the VTX power was set on 25 milliwatts, so that the image quality will be a little bit much lower. The trip distance and the home distance. Here is the flight time. This time will start as soon as your quadcopter is armed. This arrow indicates the home direction relative to your quadcopter. In the center you have the artificial horizon and here I chose to display the pitch and roll angles of the Hover Games quadcopter. In the right bottom part of the screen it's the heading rows, a compass. Here is the same information represented by a value in degree and one small mention. The information is a real north, not the magnetic one. A little bit higher is a throttle value the radio signal strength, but here it doesn't work, mainly because my radio receiver does not offer such information and the temperature of the FMU, but the Hover Games FMU does not have a such sensor. The ground speed and the vertical speed or the rate of climb are computed using the information provided by the GPS system. The current drawn by the quadcopter in the present moment is also presented here. Okay, sometimes it is a lot and it is possible that in my system the current model to be uncalibrated. The battery voltage and the battery charge level in persons are presented here. For the last information, battery charge levels, in order to have the correct information, you should set your battery capacity using the QGround control software. In this moment, I will go with the drone to the landing point, the home position.
and a very good landing, one meter from the home position. At the end, we have a summary of the parameter of the flight. One moment, please. Of course, all of this information presented on the OSD can be removed and other information can be added. 